Welcome to another episode of Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today my guest is Eric Bassart. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Hey, Travis, thanks for having me on. Yeah, dude, so really, really big honor to have you here. You're kind of like one of my favorite local artists. So uh, for the viewers who aren't familiar with you, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you grew up at, what school you went to, some things like that. Sweet, thanks, man. Um, I'm a, my name's Eric Bussart. I'm a local uh, illustrator and mural artist. I grew up uh, in Ambler, a little town outside of Philly. Uh, I've been doing murals mostly in the Scranton area for the last you know, four or five years, here and there. Um, yeah, I do that, illustration, painting, freelance, uh, things like that. So where, where'd you go to school at? Sweet. Um, I went to college at uh, Marywood University Nice. for about four years. I graduated with a BFA in illustration. Um, which is really helpful. There's some really good teachers there. They have great facilities. And it just gave me the foundation to like really explore my own style and my artwork going forward after that. Nice. So a BA in art. So you're like a legit artist. Like a real Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no, one really, no one's ever asked me to see that. You know, the, yeah. the, the, it's all, it doesn't really matter. It's how good are you at painting? How good are you at drawing? Yeah, so, so you've been an artist your whole life, like uh, since childhood, like that art kid and just grew up into it or is it something you discovered later in life? Oh no, absolutely. Like, um, since I can remember, like, you know, I've always been like, you know, the most like extra kid in each art class I've been in since like kindergarten or like, you know, first grade. Um, I was like really just doing, I do it all the time. Like I have like pretty terrible ADHD. Mm -hmm. So to like kind of concentrate on what like the people were saying in class, the teachers, I would just draw and it sort of anchored my mind there. So I was just drawing for like hours every day in class. Um, yeah, and around like 16, like one of my art teachers just told me like, you could like do something with this, like for, with your life. And he kind of like set me on that path. Uh, Mr. Miller, he's my high school art teacher. Nice. He's the man. Um, yeah, he set me up with like college prep stuff, some like pre-college courses at Tyler, things like that. Like just all the resources I would need to get into a col to college and then like to be successful there. So yeah, around like 16, I started really pushing it. like taking every art class I could, going mm. to Tyler for like high school level or uh, unaccredited courses. Um, yeah, and then I just kept going from there. Wow, so at 16, you were already taking like college courses? Uh, uncredited, but yeah, but it, it was like I would be like doing like print shops and like print, um, figure drawing, like nude figure drawing. And Tyler had like really good like uh, variety of models. Mm. They would have like, you know, very like Rubenesque large women and like skinny dudes and like it, 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 it's just a very, it's a good program there. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> besides your, your art teacher, uh, who else kind of motivated you or in, inspired you at that young age, you know, your early years or teenage years? Were, were there any other influences that, that you saw that really just solidified in your mind, like, this is what I want to do? Uh, yeah, the, I, my, my pops was pretty big into drawing. Mm. Uh, he taught me some of my my earlier foundational skills. Your father's an artist? Yeah, yeah. Not like professionally, but he, he was, he's very good. Like yeah, yeah. technical ink drawing, it taught me how to draw like monsters and stuff and like, you know, dinosaur teeth. Oh, wow. Stuff like that while I was real young and then they just kind of expounded on those skills. So, uh, yeah, I think, and then aside from that, I just really liked the act of doing drawing. Like I liked little storytelling and like little, you know, conflicts and expressions and emotions on the page. I nice. Just, really enjoyed doing it. So you started out doing illustrations and drawings and stuff. What, what pushed you to do these larger uh, format murals that you've, that you've been doing for the past couple of years? Um, yeah, so like while, when I was at uh, Marywood, to pay for my apartment, I, would, uh, I, I worked summers as a house painter. So I would get up on these lifts. I learned how to use like ladders, you know, different paints and... So this is just like normal remodeling type yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. home like, decor. Yeah, 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 like painting, like, you know, painting your room yellow. Or painting Kitchens your, and bathrooms yeah, and stuff like exciting. that. Exciting, but yeah, like, yeah. I sort of amassed a large amount of like skills in that area. So then I started just combining the illustration with those like big painting skills. Mm. So then like, I already knew how to use the ladders and the lifts and the brushes and the rollers. But now I could take what I was learning on the studio and put that on larger walls with those nice. skills. So who, who gave you your first commission for a mural? Ryan Nett, I think. <laughs> really? Yeah, Ryan um, commissioned, he uh, owned at the time uh, Electric City Escape. Okay. And he commissioned me for, I believe, $500 to paint a collaboration mural with him on the side of Levels. That would be the Scranton mural. That was one of your first murals? Right? Yeah, Ryan funded that out of pocket. Wow. That was my first wow. paid mural commission. So. 
Thanks, dude. Uh, that's actually uh, one of my favorite murals, Ryan. One of the one of the first murals that I actually took notice to, and I was like, right down the little alley, you drive by, it's like, that's that's pretty dope. I took a picture in front of that mural a couple times. Yeah, it's a little it's a little banger. Got lucky on that. <laughs> so, um, what other what other kind of projects are you currently working on? Uh, right now, just murals. It's sort of the end of this, like the end of the season. Yes. So I'm just like slammed Sorry. with murals, like uh. I'm working on a very large, my biggest one so far, wow. down in uh, Wilkes right now with uh, Grayson. Okay. Um, have a art. He's amazing. Definitely Fantastic is. Fantastic man. He can render like, you know, amazingly. He can render. So, um, yeah, we're doing like a, a bunch of like famous people from the 50s on a large wall with a big colorful background. Have a, that's pretty much it. Aside from that, I'm doing uh, Inktober. It's like a yearly drawing challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been following you on that. That's pretty good stuff you're putting out there. <laughs> so with the Inktober, is this is just pen and ink on, on paper? Uh, yeah, I'm using um, uh, Copic markers, which I guess counts as ink technically. Yeah, it's yeah, alcohol yeah. ink. But yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, just on my, my sketchbook. Start them off in pencil, ink them up with, uh, I use a Japanese calligraphy pen. Nice. And then uh, just color them with them with Copics. So what are, what are, what's your favorite medium to use? Because I, I follow your art and you use a lot of different mediums from paints to markers, pens, even your, your digital art, which is amazing as well. So do you, do you have a favorite? Do you feel more drawn to one style or medium than the other? Um, yeah, I just like drawing. So painting is like, painting is cool, but I really just like drawing. So I sort of fall in and out of love with certain things, but the constant is usually like my ballpoint Bic. Yeah. It's just that cheap thing. You got like staples for like, you know, 80 cents a yeah. pen. It's just uh, an incredibly versatile tool and you can build the things up really slowly. Like you can drag it with almost no pressure and it makes like a practically invisible line or you can push it into the, crush the tooth of the paper mm. and it's nearly like pure black. So it's like very few tools besides it, like a pencil have that level of versatility. Nice. How do you feel your art has changed over the years since You've been taking art really seriously since a, a teenager, uh, and I can imagine that your your skill, your talent, as well as you yourself as a person have changed and grown over the years. So do you see a growth in, in your art and a change in your art, and where, it, where, where, where could you define that at? Hmm. Um, I think like just the, the more I looked at like what kind of art I liked, the more I realized it was like, similar to the kind of music I like, and uh, where it's like, I like storytelling in it, right? So it's like, I would see art where you can see like a narrative forming in it, mm -hmm. and to me that's like very rich. So like, that's very hard to do. Like I, I, I kind of had like a natural, I don't know, like get, uh, ability to like do like expressions, I think, early on. Like to be like, oh, happy, sad, cranky, grumpy. Mm -hmm. you know, like, but then like to actually convey like a narrative, I had like very little ability to do. So I'm sort of trying to move more towards that. Like story driven. What picture. kind of stories do you want to tell with your art? Um, sort of like, like almost like pulp narratives. I like like I really like like gritty action stuff. Like you know, like not violent things, but like very exciting things, like mm -hmm. conflicts. Um, um, th things that like you can sort of like project yourself onto too. Things that are like very like like you're like oh damn I felt like that guy yeah, or yeah. like. That's like the struggle. So like find something relatable in it to, to make something like this people can actually see their own experiences in mm -hmm. or relate to. I get that. It, and it's, it's, it's tough to get that imagery from your head to the canvas, but I really enjoy that challenge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one last question. Um, <clears throat> now you do a lot of uh, figurative art. So when you're when you're producing these arts do you use reference photos or when you go into your character building are most of your characters just original characters from your mind um i use a lot of reference to like um piece together like what i want to what i want to do but um when i when i'm making like a character like i i can't like obviously like if i find a picture of a guy like i can't take a picture of him in every pose i want my character to do so what I use um, like formulas. Like there's this uh, old drawing book series by Andrew Loomis, Loomis. and one of them is uh, for portraits, right? Yep. So there's almost like a formulaic way of doing heads. Yeah. Where it's like um, 
it's all just ratios and math. You draw and like, the circle, then draw the chin. Yeah. Oval on the side. And then like everyone just yeah exactly exactly yeah, you, yeah. you're very familiar. But then like people would just have slight deviations from it. So then like once you know the formula to build a head, all you all you need is like oh I can do like one or two pictures or a couple guys I like, and then from there I can sort of form the head that I want for that character to have. Yeah. I'm very impressed with your with your character designs, your character builds. Dude, you're you're <laughs> so good. At Thanks, it. man. It uh, means a lot coming for you, dude. You're insanely talented with the oils, dude. So so now what I want to do is check out some of the art you brought in and um, break some of this stuff down for our viewers. So uh, this piece you have here, uh, does this have a title to it? Uh, complimentary. I think complimentary. I, I don't I don't name my stuff too often. Yeah, it's kind of hard naming and put names on it. My names are really basic <laughs> <laughs> when I do do it. But um, once again, uh, just seeing your, your work up close, uh, the first thing that really strikes me is like the boldness of your strokes. You have, um, you make really big pronounced strokes that are very deliberate, uh, like the stripes on a tiger, the highlights on her calf and on her knee, where, whereas like, even myself, because I, I compare my techniques to a lot of other artists' techniques, like I, I'm always trying to like fine line it and brush it and your strokes just seem like so deliberate and so strong and so bold, it, it really <laughs> makes them stand out a lot more. So uh, is, this, is this an original character design that you did? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, I just wanted, like, the, to mirror the orange of the tiger in the hair. Mm -hmm. And then, like, throw in a couple of other elements just to, you know, make a cool thing. And what medium, what medium is this here? Uh, it's probably, it's mostly uh, golden fluid acrylics. Okay. With a little bit of a F and W golden ink, I believe, is the brand for that gold. Um, in the, the, the uh, sword that she has? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some kind of ink. I believe it's F and W. Uh, that's awesome how you put the, the glitter effect in there. And I'm I'm really partial to women smoking. <laughs> I've, I've done several images with women smoking. It just looks so cool. Yeah, uh, the smoking in general looks insanely cool. It looks, it's not very healthy for you, but it looks cool. No, it's, it's undeniable that nothing looks cooler than smoking. Than smoking, <laughs> especially when it's a, a, a pretty young lady who's a... Uh, partaking in <laughs> some tobacco products. And the, the smoke itself, like, how you're able to capture so much detail, once again, with these really pronounced strokes is, is amazing to me. Then you have the slight halo effect around her where the canvas kind of darkens as you pull towards the edges. The details in the tiger itself, the, um, the whiskers and everything, dude. It's, uh, what, what type of brushes did you use for, for this piece? Um, I just get like the super cheap variety packs at AC More because I don't take really good care of my brushes. Yeah. The only thing I treat like really good is my, uh, my like ink liners. Okay. But I only have, because they're kind of expensive, but I just get like the cheap packs of like uh, Artist Loft brushes. They're, they're <laughs> terrible, but like, I, li I like the, the dagger tips, like the 45 degree chisels. Yeah, yeah. I really like those. Uh, I would imagine you, you had some super expensive camel hair brushes or something to get these details and lines like that. I, I, <laughs> I couldn't do, do it with some, some cheap brushes like that. Your work is amazing, man. I really love this imagery. Uh, let's see Thanks, some of the other stuff you brought. Sweet, sweet. Um, so yeah, what, do we, what do we have here? Oh, uh, this is uh, a mural I completed this past summer. Um, it's uh, a mural of uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. It was a collaboration between myself and uh, Emmanuel Wisdom. A, uh, he's a graphic artist based in Philly. Um, check him out at uh, uh, UNA Design, unadesign.co. He is an uh, incredible artist, dude. Like, what he can do with type, it's like what you do with oil, dude. It's just incomprehensible, dude. Like, it's, in, um, yeah, so we just like, kind of combined our styles. He has that like, really bold, kind of powerful type style with that very clear message. Mm. And then we combine that with my kind of like, uh, my, my soft illustrative, delicate kind of flowers and everything. And then just that bold black and white portrait for MLK. I really love your flower work, dude. And I, I see you um, kind of incorporate that a lot into your artwork. And I, I love it every time I see you doing these, these beautiful flowers. Like you say, the soft 
pastel colors you use in there with the really bold font is you guys did an amazing job on this so when when did you complete this i don't remember it was uh was it june or no somewhere in there may or june and about how long did it take you guys to finish that one um it was across like i think like 12 days and i, I logged the hours it was like um i think i was at like 136 hours wow in for myself days. and then my assistants had a, a collective like 86 i think wow that's so a lot of work over 200 man hours yeah but you can see pure the passion work. project you yeah know? you can see the work that was put into it thanks man so let's check out some more art that you brought sure dude <laughs> uh this is a, a inking piece mm -hmm. so like um comic art sort of like an assembly line where like each artist does a different part one artist draws the image one artist does the ink and the color speech bubbles text so this is like a, a purely technical exercise in like inking. It's sort of a thing I'm trying to get into. So um, what is this project a part of? Is, wait a minute, is this Swamp Thing? Yeah, it's Swamp Thing. This okay. is just like, um, I just went online and found like professional artist pencils and then saw how well I could ink over them, you know? It's sort of it's similar oh. to like a master copy. Oh, you know, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just a, like a exercise for you, like a, a yeah. practice. That's, yeah, yeah. Your inking is awesome, dude. It's sort of a portfolio piece. I'm trying yeah, to yeah. like push this as a, I'm trying to market this as a thing I'm offering, you know? Is that something you really want to get into? It's more comic book art? Yeah, I'd like uh, most, almost all my income comes from the murals, which is nice, but then in the winter, I'm, you know, it's a, it's a lull. So I'd like to get into more like uh, desk, you know, the studio based things. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is really impressive. Uh, and what, what type of pen and ink did you use on this? Uh, almost all, um, I forget what it's, I don't know the name, but it's a, it's like a fensuke. It's like, um, it's a Japanese calligraphy pen. Oh, wow. So it's, it's like sort of like a Sharpie, but if the Sharpie tip could bend. Are you dipping the ink? Or oh, no, no, no. It it's flows a, yeah, it's from got the pen it's, itself? It's got an ink well. Okay. It's a, like, uh, but it's just a very uh, versatile pen. Like, I just really like versatility in my tools. Yeah, really impressive. Let's check out some more stuff. Sweet, dude. Um. So checking out this next piece from you, uh, I love your signature, by the way. It's so dope with the crown. Thanks, man. Uh, this is another original character design? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, another original piece. I did this one in a ballpoint pen with a little bit of ink wash for that snake. Um, ink wash, describe that to me. Uh, you just take like pure black ink and then you you form like different um, darknesses by different dilutions of water. Okay. So like, you know, you want it to be like almost white, you just put a tiny drop of that black ink in a water. And then if you want it to be like middle gray, you know, half ink, half water. Mm, 50 shades of gray. Exactly, dude. Once again, your line work is so exquisite. Your hashing and everything is just so detailed. Um, does this character have a name? Uh, not yet. This is a this is an early version of a character that I fleshed out significantly more since. Mm -hmm. I was just sort of playing with the uh, the dress and the hair a little bit. Um, Does the the mouse and snake have any significance or? Um, it's, uh, kind of. It, I don't. Uh, not really. <laughs> it just looks cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, it's sort yeah, sort of like symbolic, maybe, but like not literally. Um, I'm a major fan of uh, shadows. I, I love the the play of light and shadow, and just how the tail swoops here, this little yeah. shadow here, her hand, and how it flows in the fabric is it's very very impressive, dude. Your your work is very impressive. I've been looking at a lot of uh, Sean Gordon Murphy. He's a familiar. comic book artist. He he does a, I think he's got a Batman run still going, okay. or Harley Quinn run now. The Batman run would be over, but he's a. Uh, He's done a, a bunch of like things with like uh, Image Comics, mm. and like the way he uses the black, it's like incredible. Yeah, yeah. Image was my favorite comic book company. <laughs> uh, they produced Todd McFarlane's Spawn, which yeah, I was yeah, a yeah. major fan of. Spawn and Wildcats were probably like my favorite too from Image. They did the Max too, didn't they? Was, uh, Marvel Max? No, it was uh, M A X X. Max was. Yeah, that's I, that was Marvel's adult line. It was. Yeah, like Punisher Max. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, Daredevil Max. It was like their R-rated comics. Okay. Uh, how much stuff do we have left? Let's check out. I want to see this right here. 
Oh, sure. Nice, dude. That's a little piece of fan art. I got yeah. a storm from the X-Men. Um, yeah, really just playing with like, letting those grays build up and then like letting that white of that paper really come through. Yeah. It takes a lot of like planning to pull that. And I'm not very good at like that kind of foresight. So for me, it's a kind of, it was very challenging to leave the, leave all the, the white, white work around the white. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer working in grayscale over color or? Uh, I guess, yeah, but I just like to draw. Yeah. So like I don't really I don't have much preference. Like if what I'm drawing needs color, you know, add the color. Then I'm gonna add the it. color. But uh, yeah, I just yeah, I just really like drawing. And grayscale is the, the it's a pretty pure form of drawing. Yeah, that's where I started too. It took me years and years to add color to my art, just because I was uh, I don't know really insecure in the, in the talent at the time and the technical ability to add color. So a lot of my earliest stuff is black and white, but at the same time I think just working in black and white and grayscale forces you to be more observant of light and shadow play and, and that contrast and how to uh, mitigate the contrast and produce that, that depth, that field of depth that actually makes things look round and three dimensional. Yeah, and, definitely. Man. Yeah, and being able to do it with just a grayscale is, is, once again, I can't say how impressed I am with your work, dude. Um, one last piece we have here. Oh man, you brought so much cool stuff. Thanks, dude. So, what uh, what was the inspiration for this? Um, I just really wanted like the like a sort of a feeling of like uh, like balance, like f flow, but then also like separation, sort of like I wanted to like communicate the feeling of like weightlessness in water, sort yeah. of with like the just the way those fins just sort of on the koi fish are just sort of they kind of just flow. Like they're in like almost in like a vacuum. Yeah, I was just really focusing on like the natural beauty of the of the creature, and then trying to just give it a really bold contrast. I like it. It it reminds me of uh, the yin and yang slightly. Um, just like you say, the sphere. Then you have the circle here placed in the in the the total blackness from the background. Yeah, I was I was definitely thinking about the the symbol when yeah. I was drawing this, like with the little dot especially. To offset, you know. Any anyone's asked, have has anyone asked to get this tattooed on them yet? <laughs> I don't believe so. Yeah, it looks like it'll make an awesome tat as well. Yeah, they're welcome to, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, Eric, I'm so happy you came to chat with me, and thank you for showing all of this beautiful, magnificent art with us today. Dude, thank you for having me on. It was an honor, man. Yeah. Like I said, you're an insanely talented artist, and for you to be here, you know, asking me about my drawings. Really f flattering. Oh, really flattering. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming. This has been another episode of Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and our guest today was Eric Bissart. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.